The analytics section of SEO checklist covers installing the Google Analytics module and creating a Google Analytics account if you don't already have one. Now, Google Analytics is a way for you to measure the traffic on your website, and it provides a lot of information about the way people interact with your site, mostly, for instance, how many hits your site gets, how much time people spend on your site, how much time they spend on certain pages. It gives you a lot of in-depth information like bounce rates, pages that do particularly well, pages where people leave after just a few seconds, things like that. None of this directly impacts your search engine optimization on its own, unlike things like meta tags, which can help you get a higher page rank. What Google Analytics does is it gives you a lot of information to use so that you can see what's working on your site, what's bringing in the most traffic, and then strategize to capitalize on that the best you can. So we're gonna start off by installing and enabling the Google Analytics module. You can find that at drupal.org slash project slash Google underscore analytics. And once you've downloaded and installed the Google Analytics module, as always, we'll go to extend. So now we can either search for Google Analytics here or click the statistics tab. Again, if you're using the module filter module and we have Google Analytics, it's just one single module. We'll check it and install. Once this has been enabled, We'll go back to configuration, search and metadata, SEO checklist, and analytics, and it should be checked off for us. Now it wants us to configure Google Analytics. Now, don't go here yet. This is one place where I'm going to break from the order that the items are listed here, and I'm gonna say, sign into Google Analytics and create an analytics property for your website first. Now it's possible that you may already have uh, a Google Analytics account and you may even already have Google Analytics on your Drupal website. Again, if this is a site that you've already been working on that's already live, technically you can use Google Analytics just by pasting in the tracking code into your template. It's not a best practice at all. It's always best to use the Google Analytics module but I have seen some people do that if they're not really 100% familiar with the best way to use Drupal. So this is all to say, we're gonna do this step first. You can sign in to Google Analytics at google.com slash analytics. You'll click sign in, analytics. Of course, if you don't have an account, it'll simply ask you to sign up for one and you'll go through that process and then it's also, if we go back to our checklist, asking us not only to sign in, but to create an analytics property for your website. So going back to this page. Now, if you've just set up Google Analytics for the first time, then likely it's going to run you through the process of adding a property, and by property it means website, to your Google Analytics account in order to start tracking the traffic to that site because you can have one account with multiple websites. Now, if you already have a Google Analytics account, maybe you're using it to track traffic on other sites and you might get a page like this that's, that goes ahead and shows you traffic for one of your sites. The way you add another property is you click admin and under property, you're gonna click this button that has the name of the current site and then there will be a button to add a new property. And then you'll have to go through the typical verification process and all that pretty simple stuff, and you'll have that property added to your Google Analytics account. So once we've done that, we'll go ahead and check that off and click Save. And then, if we go back to Analytics, then we're gonna configure Google Analytics. Now, I'll show you why we're doing this after this step in just a second. So we can navigate to the Google Analytics module, or we can just click Configure here, it'll take us straight there. And the first thing we need to do is enter our web property ID. Google Analytics gives you a unique ID for every property that you have. And so we need to find the one for this site in our analytics dashboard and paste it in here. As it says here, it's always in the form of UA dash lots of characters dash two more characters. It's very easy to find this information if you know where to look for it. 
Again, this is in the admin section, so you'll need to click admin if you haven't already. Make sure you have the correct property selected. And then if you just click property settings, you'll see the tracking ID right here. And we have dash just one character, that's fine. Just whatever it shows here, copy everything from the UA all the way to the very last digit and paste that in here. And then we have a few other things to configure. What are you tracking? A single domain, one domain with multiple subdomains, such as www.example.com, app.example, shop.example, etc., or multiple top-level domains for a multi-site setup. In most cases, and in our case, we're going to be going with a single domain. Then pages. You can add pages on here to leave off of your Google Analytics tracking. So, in other words, we don't care about the traffic to admin or anything in the admin section. This slash asterisk means admin slash anything. It's leaving out these. Node add, that's where we're going to create new pieces of content on our website. We don't want to track the traffic here because it's not indicative of real traffic that's coming to our site. These are just admins that are logging into our site, in our case, us, to configure the site or to add content. And that we don't care about that traffic because that's not real traffic, so to speak. So we're going to leave these pages off. You can add any other pages here to leave off if you'd like, or you can delete them all if, for whatever reason, you do want to track that traffic. We can select what roles we want to track traffic for. This is really useful just in the same way that the pages are useful here. Note if we have none selected, it tracks everything. We might not want to track administrators, for instance. So since this is add to these selected roles, if we start narrowing th things down here, then we'll want to check the ones we do want to track unless we check this button add to every role except the selected ones. Just be careful with what you select here. So if we're adding to the selected roles only and we don't want administrators to be tracked because again, we don't care about their traffic, that's not really real traffic. We do want to track anonymous users and authenticated users. Now we also have the ability to track specific users behavior on the website. We can give them the option to opt in or opt out and turn tracking on or off by default. We can also use track user ID, which as it says here, enables the analysis of groups of sessions across devices for individual users. If you want to know about the technicalities of that, you can click here and Google will give you a little bit of information. So really just choose whatever you feel is best for your analytics here. I'm just going to leave them as they are because I'm not worried about drilling that deep down into it. I just want an overall sense of my traffic. But there are many cases, in fact, maybe most cases, where you would want to track that. Uh, links and downloads. This is essentially saying that you're going to track links and downloads. We're not going to do any customization here. In most cases, you'll just want to leave this as is. This is a little bit more advanced. Messages. You can track status warning and error messages that are shown to users. Now, in all cases, your users should not see these. You don't want to be displaying, for instance, PHP errors or module errors or you know things like that, system errors in general, to your users. That's not only bad user experience, but it makes you look bad and it's a security concern. But maybe just to be safe, go ahead and check these. So that way, in Google Analytics, you will be able to track warning and error messages, especially if you don't think you're displaying them, so that if some of these do show up, then you can see that in your analytics dashboard and try to fix things accordingly. Search track and advertising. You can track internal searches on your website. Now setting this up is also a little bit complex. We're not gonna dig into it, but you can click this link for more information because this does take some configuration on Google Analytics site as well. You can track AdSense ads if you are displaying AdSense ads on your website. And track display features deals with using browser cookies to track user behavior across various websites as they pertain to the ads that you're displaying. As it mentions here, if you choose this option, you do need to update your privacy policy to let your users know that you're doing this. I'm going to just leave all of these unchecked. And finally, you can anonymize visitors' IP addresses. This is typically a best practice 
so that you don't have any identifying information from your users. As it mentions here, in some countries, it's illegal to track the full IP address. If you do check this, it will still be able to give you a lot of geographic information, but it will, as it says, leave off the last octet of the IP address so you can't narrow it down to one individual or one location. And then you're not gonna have to worry about any of these other settings. These are a bit more advanced and in most cases you won't need to touch them except for one thing that's in advanced settings, which is locally cache the tracking code file. Now, the way Google Analytics works is it puts tracking code on the pages of your website and when someone hits it, that code executes and tells Analytics to update the information accordingly. Say we got a hit right now and this person was on the page for this amount of time. Again, that's, by, that's done by pasting tracking code or by inserting tracking code onto the pages of your website. Caching that locally, in other words, caching it on your website instead of loading it from Google every single time a page is loaded, can help your site performance-wise. You're probably not gonna notice this unless you're running a very large site, but there's not much of a downside. The only downside is if Google Analytics updates their tracking code or the way their tracking code works, you won't get that update until like the next day. So you just won't get it instantaneously. That's really not ever going to cause you any big problems. So I recommend locally caching this to help performance, even if it's not really a, a visible boost in performance. After you've done all that, click Save Configuration. And now Google Analytics has been set up on our website and it will begin tracking our traffic. Now, if we go back very quickly to search and metadata, SEO checklist, and analytics, we want to tell it that we did configure Google Analytics. We are caching Google Analytics code. And we'll click Save. And I'm not going to walk through this next step, but the next step is to verify that your site is sending data to Google Analytics. That basically means visit your site, click around on it, and then check your analytics to see if any traffic was recorded. Now, there are two things to note here. One, sometimes traffic is not instantly available. So if you don't see that traffic show up right away, then don't worry about it. Maybe give it an hour, a couple hours, or maybe even a day before you start freaking out that it's not tracking your traffic. Another thing to note here is that while you're doing this, it's best to do this in incognito mode. So in Google Chrome and in Firefox as well, if you right click on it, you can open an incognito window where nothing that you're doing is being tracked by your web browser. What this also does is it has the benefit of essentially letting you visit the site as an anonymous user. So it won't recognize you as coming from your usual place. You won't be logged in in any way. So it's a good way to pretend that you're somebody other than yourself, click around on your site. So that way, due to the configuration that we had in Google Analytics where we told it not to track admins, not to track certain pages, we won't accidentally be you know, logged in as an administrator clicking around. And for that reason, it's not tracking our activity. And then if we forgot about that and view analytics and saw no activity on there, then we might freak out. So. When you're clicking around on your site to test this, bottom line is it's best to do that in incognito mode to make sure that the traffic is actually being recorded. Again, assuming that you have analytics set up properly. So we'll check that when we're done. The last things on here, we see alt. Basically, these are alternatives to most of what we've already done. This is for Piwik web analytics. You can find out more about this at piwik.org. There is a Drupal module for this service right here. If we click download, I'll open this in a new tab, drupal.org slash project slash Piwik. And all this is is an alternative to Google Analytics. So if you prefer this over Google Analytics or for some reason you don't like Google Analytics, then you can use Piwik instead. Again, it does the same thing, generally speaking. It's just another service that you can use instead of Google Analytics if you prefer.